Hello everyone. Hello. Thank you for being here. Welcome to this new LinkedIn Live session. So today I'm very happy to um, launch a new topic about Vietnam. So it will be about tax, business and regulatory compliance to unlock uh, your own success in Vietnam. Uh, first, before beginning, I just want to let you know that we just launched the Doing Business in Vietnam 2023-2024. It will help you to know a lot of insights, key testimonials and key top sectors to invest in Vietnam for the coming years. Don't hesitate to download it in our website. So let's dive into uh, the tax and regulatory compliance in Vietnam. I'm very happy today to have this new LinkedIn Live session with our partners, uh, Fidinam, Ms. Tao, who is a managing director at Fidinam, and why we created this uh, partnership between Sosophasia and Fidinam, because we see that there are a lot of synergies and complementarities in between how to do business and how to set up uh, for, uh, foreign business uh, in Vietnam, and they have a lot of things to talk about today, tax compliance. Ms. Tao, the stage is yours. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for having me on our show today. So hello everyone, my name is Phuom Thao so from Finam Vietnam, a part of Finam's group in Switzerland. So we have more than 60 years of experience uh, in providing service to corporate and, and individual clients in Europe, and we have more than a decade of experience in operating in the Asian market. In addition to our strong presence uh, in Europe, we have a team here with about is more than 50 people uh, who are based in different offices in Shanghai, Hong Kong, Singapore, Ho Chi Minh City, and Hanoi. So one of our uh, primary focus is on assisting foreign investors in doing business abroad uh, by helping them to analyze the tax implication to structure their business and optimize tax, and uh, by setting up the company in the regions and also providing the corporate, uh, I mean, the, the, the compliance service in different jurisdiction. And also with a team in Vietnam here, so we can assist Vietnamese clients to scale up their business uh, overseas as well. So uh, we are doing the service directly in the country that we are ha having the, the physical present, uh, like Vietnam, but in other jurisdiction where we do not have physical office, but we have a strong network there and our client appoint us at a, uh, contact points for them to work with the local partner for the corporate services. So in this case, we we provide a service through uh, our partner. Our team in Vietnam is a combination of CPA and legal background professional from Vietnam and also European profile. So this make us uh, can you know is and by I is in able us to extend our support beyond Vietnam, making is a. Uh, the key advantages of partnering with Vietnam. So this is just in a nutshell about who we are and what we are doing overseas and also in Vietnam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tao. Thank you for, for this presentation. We will go directly into the business environment for Vietnam. So why we are here today, because uh, with Fidinam and Sosophagia, we so we see, we observe that for many years now, uh, and even before COVID, uh, that many companies are coming from China because of the China plus one strategy. So a lot of companies uh, are willing to diversify the supply chain to find new potential market to, to enter. And also it's also about uh, security and risks to uh, avoid some um, being only in China. So we can see that we have more and more uh, opportunities and more and more clients coming to Vietnam. What is important to say is people and clients are coming to Vietnam, but actually they don't know about the regulation. It's very difficult to and complex to understand all the tax and regulation uh, incoming into uh, how to create a business in Vietnam. So that's why we're here today. The most uh, relevant question we have from our customers team setting up a business in Vietnam. So let's uh, let's uh, begin with regular, regulatory, sorry, and compliance question uh, we, we, we have with uh, Tao from our clients. So uh, Ms. Tao, maybe can you answer for the first uh, question? Can foreign um, investors set up a company with 100% foreign invested capital in Vietnam today? Well, so actually this question is frequently posed 
by investors as well. And also for me, it's quite understandable because when investors enter the new market, they may prefer to retain the whole ownership. So in Vietnam, the possibility to set up the foreign-owned company depends on the business activity that foreign investors want to do in my country. The good news is that now Vietnam is very open for foreign investment. This means foreign companies, foreign investors can set up foreign-owned company, I mean 100 foreign-owned company to do a wide range of activities and services in Vietnam, like for production, for trading, for F&B, for construction, they can uh, set up 100% foreign-owned company here to do that kind of activities. However, I think there's one point that I would like to emphasize to our audience that for some certain sector like uh, transportation service, logistics service, or advertising service, Vietnam governments do require the participation of local partner. So this requirement, uh, you know, um, come from various uh, reason. Uh, in some specific case, I think it's a part of the government strategy to protect the domestic business among other consideration. So talking about the threat hole of the foreign ownership in these uh, particular business, uh, they are regulated in the um, international agreement between Vietnam and the country where where the investor come from and also in the local regulation. So uh, typically, um, when we have the clients uh, want to set up the business here and wonder whether they can set up 100% uh, foreign-owned company here or not, then we can have the client to check it uh, in the uh, international agreement and also the local regulation to determine the proper uh, corporate structure for the client. Mm. Thank you very much. It's very important that you also define your sectors to be sure that you are able and you are it's into the law that you can go in 100% ownership for this type of sector or not. Um, yes. We also have a, a big question sometimes from our customer. What is the minimum charter capital required for creating a company in Vietnam? Well, so in Vietnam, except for some, I mean, to the few uh, highly regulated sector, like uh, banking, insurance, education, healthcare, and a few others. There's no minimum capital requirement for foreign company who want to do business in Vietnam. So it means that the, the minimum capital to be injected depends on, I mean, uh, I mean the, the it determined by investor based on their investment plan in Vietnam. Uh, so typically uh, the capital structure of a foreign company a comprise of two parts. The first is the contributed capital, which is contributed by the investor within 90 days from the incorporation day of the company in Vietnam. And secondly, a second part is for the long-term capital, which it depends, depends on the business plans of investor when they do business in Vietnam. So in summaries, uh, in the most of activity in Vietnam, like a factory trading activity, construction, F&B, or shopware production center, there's no required on a minimum capital. So it will be defined based on the plans of the investor when they do business in Vietnam. Okay. Thank you very much, Tao. I think uh, we have some uh, already some answer regarding the regulatory and compliance. Let's move into the tax planning. Maybe if you have some highlights about tax planning, the information regarding Vietnam, and after we can ask some questions about that. Um, for instance, uh, I was thinking about the standard income tax in Vietnam is now 20%, right? And it might be reduced to 15%. Uh, so, actually, uh, yes, you are right. So, the current standard income tax rate in Vietnam is uh, 20%, and it is applicable to both foreign invested company and local company. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, you know, that in order to attract foreign investors coming to Vietnam and expand their business here, Vietnam offer a wide range of investment incentive to foreign investors who are investing in the incorrect sectors like education, healthcare, high-tech, shortware production, education and so on, or who are invested in the incorrect location where they have the difficult economics and uh, social condition, uh, which is difficult or extremely difficult, or when their projects, when their projects satisfy the condition 
to be considered as a mega projects in order to you know to uh, enjoy the the, the, the in, uh, investment incentive in Vietnam. Yes. So yeah. the investment incentive in Vietnam uh, take into you know they are in two forms: corporate income tax incentive exemption from the import taxation for the imported material and machine used for the production of exports. Uh, the exemption or reduction of the land you right or land you fee and uh, the increase of the uh, fixed access when calculated income tax uh, in Vietnam. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, there's one point that you know, there's no difference uh, in terms of taxation between foreign okay. company and local company. So okay. all the, the tax implication are the same and all the tax uh, uh, incentive are available to both foreign company and local foreign money. Okay, very interesting. Thank you for this input. And how can we cal qualify, uh, how to be qualified as goods made in Vietnam uh, to enjoy uh, custom duty incentive under FTAs? So that's really uh, interesting. <laughs> Uh, interesting question that I often receive from our clients because, as you know, there's a, a new trend of foreign company coming to Vietnam to partially uh, uh, manufacture, I mean, produce their product in Vietnam. So the, it's very important information to know, to them to know that how their product can be considered as product made in Vietnam in order to you know, enjoy the tax incentive. So in order to enjoy the, the custom elimination or reduction in accordance with the free trade agreement, um, good made in Vietnam must be accompanied by uh, with a certificate of origin. Mm -hmm. The rule of origins uh, can vary among free trade agreement, but in general, it is regulated status for the product that wholly obtained in Vietnam, such as their derived from the, the, the national source, like mineral product, vegetable, uh, plant, or the item that are wholly um, grow or harvested or hunted in Vietnam are considered as good made in Vietnam. But for the product that are not wholly obtained in Vietnam, so they must meet the criteria for the value of the product. So to be more specific, so in order to, uh, you know, to recognize that the good made in Vietnam, the law requires us a significant portion of the product must be added or transformed in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So uh, the rules are different, but let's take EB FTA as an example. So EB FTA set out for three uh, types of uh, origins, which is the food is a change in the tariff classification. It say that uh, the, it, I mean, these criteria uh, require that uh, the, the HA code of the product, final product, must be different from the HA code of the origins uh, or uh, nuns originating material. So as the, the change in the HS cost might be happen uh, in the three levels, uh, the first level is two degrees, which is a change in the, the chapter of the project, or four degrees, which means the change in the tariff heading, or six degrees, uh, which is a change of the tariff subheading. So, uh, so and, and you know, in EVFTA, there's only one case apply the, the first rule, which is the change in the chapter, which is applicable for the tooth or pipe uh, made up of steel or iron. The second criteria is the limit of the non originating material. So these uh, criteria that are the maximum percentage of the nuns originating material used to produce product in Vietnam. And the last one is the Pacific process. Uh, this criteria require that uh, a product in Vietnam must be undergo a certain, I mean, a Pacific process uh, in the, the, the country of origins, or the product must be produced by a certain of material that are wholly obtained in Vietnam. So it, it's quite, you know, it's quite, uh, it's, 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 it die into technical details and I hope that it's not become boring for you. So, yeah. you know, your, your question actually remind me a case of my client that we are cities in the past. So this client coming from Italy and uh, they, they have an uh, office in China and they, in 2021, they were exploring uh, the possibility of diversify their product. By, by production by expanding to Vietnam. And we have them to, you know, to analyze um, 
the custom duty and also VAT impacts when they ship their main product to Vietnam and keep using some material imported from overseas. So we have the client to analyze the HS code chains from the non-originating material to the final product based on the, the free trade agreement that I have just mentioned. I mean, based on the rule uh, uh, stipulated in the free trade agreement. So we have them to analyze the tech indication, the tech uh, elimination of imported material, uh, and also condition for their product in order to consider as the at the product made in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, when we work on these reports, we took into account various factors, including the type material, HS course of the material and also finished product. And of course, the, the rule of origins in uh, free trade agreement. And uh, you know, uh, then uh, the giving, uh, given the, the positive tech impact, the client decided to set up the factory in Vietnam, and we have them to successfully set up the factory in August 2021, which was a very challenging time due to the, the COVID mm -hmm. pandemic. But we consider it as, like, uh, as a remarkable achievement for the client and also for us, because the client have the, the factory ready in March 2022, and at that time, when when China, uh, you know, imposed restriction, a restriction, and closes border, and nine more than ninety percent of the purchase order were redirected to the factory in Vietnam, and the factory plays a very uh, crucial role in mm -hmm. maintaining the productions and minimizing the disruption. Mm -hmm. So Thank it's you, a very Carol. nice story that I would like to share with you. I think it's uh, it's very insightful because we clearly see. Uh, when you explain this case study, the, um, the complementary service we have together, which are you can manage the tax and complementary and, and regulation about uh, setting up a factory in Vietnam, while Sosophagia is also the added value of being operational. We can also help on creating some uh, studies to know where would be the best, for instance, industrial park to relocate the, the factory for our customers. So I really see that yes. it's um, a, a very complete uh, project. Uh, a, a customer needs to understand to come to and set up in Vietnam. It's about regulation, compliance, tax. It's also about operations uh, and how to do business concretely on the ground, how to find the, the, the good suppliers uh, for, for their factory. So operations and regulations needs to come together when you think about setting up a factory uh, in Vietnam. So it's perfect because it's doing the transition for the last part of this LinkedIn live session regarding uh, infrastructures, industrial zones in Vietnam. Uh, we believe that we also have a lot of customers uh, looking about uh, uh, this sector. So uh, just for a quick introduction, so Vietnam industrial parks uh, is substantial, right? Uh, we have more than uh, around 300, 400 industrial parks across the country. Uh, we have also an overall, overall occupancy rate uh, nearly about 70, 70% which uh, reflecting the popularity also uh, among the investors. Uh, we note that we have a lot of investors coming from China, uh, Korea, Japan, a lot of different FDI. Uh, so uh, Tao, when, when you talk uh, with uh, your partners and customers about uh, IPs and infrastructure in Vietnam, uh, do you see that uh, maybe sometimes the the, the, the foreigners ask you, can I can I own can I lease land in Vietnam? Am I am I able to do that? So yes, so uh, I'm, I'm asked that question by investor already. So the the uh, the answer for this question is no. So in Vietnam, no one can own land. So but uh, instead of the concept of land ownership. Uh, it is replaced by the land you write. So the straightforward answer to whether foreign company can own the land in Vietnam is no. However, foreign investment company in Vietnam, they can lease the land to do their business. The lease can uh, from, you know, they can lease, lease the lands from the government, from other economic organization, or even uh, from other uh, foreign investment company. So uh, while the foreign company cannot own the land, but they can uh, secure the land you write through the leasing arrangements in accordance with the legal framework in Vietnam. 
Mm, very interesting. Thank you. I think it's also linked with uh, uh, what Sosophagia is trying to do uh, with the sourcing department is to also help the foreign investors to find the potential uh, industrial park. So that is why also uh, we have a, a partnership with industrial park in South of Vietnam, in North of Vietnam for different kind of sector, right? Because for instance, we can see that in North of Vietnam, we can see more electronic components. We see Samsung is uh, and different type of industries such in these sectors are setting up in the North. While in the South, we can see uh, different other sectors. So it's also um, complex uh, to know about um, uh, the, the diversity of sectors regarding the different regions uh, in Vietnam. Uh, so that's also it's important to be supported uh, by Sosophagia and also by Fininam uh, on this, uh, these topics. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, I think that's uh, exactly the, the point I wanted to mention about the partnership. Uh, we believe that we are, uh, we are, uh, I would say, powerful uh, together, more powerful together than alone. That's why also we create this type of collaboration in between Sosophagia and Fidinam because we are clearly seeing that uh, tax compliance, compliance legals needs to be linked to the operation on the ground in Vietnam. I thank you very much, Tao, for being here together uh, today. It was a pleasure. And uh, thank you for all this uh, very insightful uh, news. Let's, uh, let's see us uh, together nice, uh, next time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.